Hi there, Mitchell Sigmund for Acoustica Zeros and Ones blog. In today's edition, we're going to talk about uh, the mashup. Now, if you've been to an EDM or techno or a big hip hop club, you've probably heard a mashup before. This is when you take two songs that probably didn't go together originally in any way, shape, or form, and through the magic of computers, you combine them together into something that totally fits, like this. What you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside that trunk. I'ma get, 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 get you drunk. Get you love drunk off my hump. My hump, my hump. My hump, my hump. Magic, right? So, in today's video, we're gonna show you how to make a mashup in Mixcraft. And it's really easy, and the results are super fun. And there's all kinds of neat stuff you can do in there. So, let's have a look at how to make a mashup in Mixcraft. Here's a mashup I put together, and to save a little time, I didn't show pulling all this stuff in, but here's a beat I've chosen from Mixcraft's loop library. Just kind of a basic four on the floor. And then a bass line, sort of a pulsing kind of thing. And then I've combined the beat and the bass part with Carly Rae Jepsen's Call Me Maybe. Hey, I just met you. Now, there are a couple of different ways you can sync existing songs to Mixcraft's Project Tempo and The Grid. The easiest way to do it is use Project Tempo over here. When we initially drag and drop a song into a Mixcraft project, it will default to time stretch mode over here. And that just means that it plays back at its regular speed, unless we adjust the rate over here, but we're not going to. So I'm going to change the tempo over here just so it's really clear that it's playing back at the wrong speed. You can see this clip doesn't really align anymore. Oh boy, what a mess. We obviously want this to play in time. So the easiest way to get it to play in time is to hit Use Project Tempo. And what happens here is Mixcraft will actually look at the entire song and find beat hit points in it and average the tempo to what it thinks it is. And this works really well for new modern music that was created in a computer environment. In other words, if the song is really solid on its beats and doesn't drift at all and was programmed and quantized, odds are it's going to play back really well inside Mixcraft. The important thing to understand when you're using this method to lock a song to the master project tempo is that Mixcraft is not moving the beats or hit points within the audio. This is what we would call warping, and it's not happening here. Mixcraft is simply making an educated guess as to the audio's inherent tempo, then playing back the entire file faster or slower to match the project tempo. Call Me Maybe is a really recent song, and sure enough, it plays back really solid in the grid if I haven't used project tempo mode. So to make this really easy to understand, I'm going to pull Call Me Maybe into an empty project. And if I play it right now, you can hear everything's off. So I'm going to double click on this, and the important thing here is I'm going to hit Use Project Tempo. And if you look at this, you're going to see the whole thing actually squish a little bit. And that's because Mixcraft figured out the inherent tempo of this is a little slower, so it squished it so it would play at 130. And now if I hit play up here, it's pretty on the beat. But I'm going to adjust the start point because I want it to start at the chorus over here. So if you look over here, Here's the chorus that I want to start at. So I'm going to zoom way out. And you can see this little tiny red mark over there. And the cursor will turn into arrows when you mouse over that. And I'm going to move this guy, move, 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 over to this area over here and zoom in super duper close. And I'm going to try to move this right where that hit is. OK, so now if we look up here, you can see where the little red marker is. And I'm going to zoom in super close. And I'm going to make it so that the clip begins exactly on that. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to slide this over. Now let's zoom in. Okay, and with Mixcraft set to snap to grid, the left edge will snap to that. Okay, so now the left edge is right on that downbeat for the chorus. And I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to move it over to one and press play. Hey, I just met you. So let's go back to our entire mashup. Yes, Hear the metronome? Perfectly locked. And I could change this tempo. And it still plays back perfect. So this is the easiest way to get a song to lock. However, it doesn't necessarily work very well with older material where the tempo might be drifting a bit or the players didn't play really tight in time. So let's move on to my next song that I've got in this mashup, which is Blondie's Call Me. 
Now, this is from the early 80s, and this was recorded on analog tape machines with analog human beings playing actual music, so there's no way that it's going to lock super tight if we just use the use project tempo method. So we're going to step things up a little bit here. First of all, I'm going to just make a copy of this. So now I've got my Call Me song ready to go, and if I hit play, there's a space, there's a drum fill, and off it goes. And the metronome is not even close to in time. Now we could use the use project tempo button here, which might sort of work, but in an old song like this, it's not really going to be very tight. And even if we do get a good average tempo out of it, you're going to hear the kicks and snares aren't going to really be on the grid very well. So here's what we can do. We're going to use the warp function. Now warping differs from the use project tempo averaging method I just described in that Mixcraft actually locates all the transient hit points like kicks and snares and then either automatically or manually lets you move individual hits within an audio file so that they fall exactly on the grid. This is what we refer to as warping and it's a super powerful way to manipulate songs or portions of songs to accurately lock to grid in a project. Now when I press warp, see all those lines appear? Let me zoom in a little bit. And what's happened is Mixcraft is getting the file ready for either auto warp or manually adding warp markers. Now the important thing to understand is that these lines here are not warp markers. All they are are little lines showing where Mixcraft has found all these transient hits in the song that can be used to align things to beats. But the very important concept to understand is that when you press the warp button, it's not going to play back any differently. If I play up here, it's the same mess it was. But by pressing warp, Mixcraft has prepared the audio for warping and has given you all these locations where warp markers can be placed and it will automatically snap to them when you go to put in warp markers, which makes it much easier than trying to do it manually. So the easiest thing we can do here is to use Mixcraft's auto warp feature. And that will make warp markers, which you'll see in just a moment, appear on these lines. So I'm gonna go with moderate and see all these red markers? Those are warp markers and those are gonna lock to the grid. So now when I press play up here, now it's a little off, but that's probably because our start time's a little off. If you move down here, see how you get those two arrows? You can slide to the left or right. That's your start time. I'm gonna set this to the downbeat of the song, which is right there. This stuff over here, that's all these drum fills. And you can see that little marker over here. So let's move that somewhere sensible, like right there. And because I've got snap turned on, snap to grid, it snaps right to it. So now let's try playing it from here and see what happens. Not bad, right? Now Mixcraft gives you a couple options for the auto warp setting. I set it to moderate, but you can set it to tight, loose, sloppy, and so forth. And the tighter settings will add more warp markers, making it more likely to track to the grid and the sloppier settings will not add as many warp markers and they'll be a little looser to the grid. This can be useful if you've got like a song with a lot of percussion, a lot of hits in it. Sometimes Mixcraft will go a little too crazy on tight and try to stretch it to the grid in ways you didn't want it to. The best advice I can give you is to just experiment with these because it's really easy to switch them. Um, you can just go from one to the other and it won't hurt anything. See when I hit tight, it added more markers. Sometimes it won't make any difference. Like, let me try it now and still works well. And again, keep in mind we're locked to the grid now so I can change the tempo to whatever the heck I want. Now there are some situations where auto warp won't work correctly and the song won't lock to grid. So in those situations, you can manually add your own warp markers. And you can do that by pressing clear and that gets rid of all the warp markers. And you've still got all these lines here, which is great because you can still add your own warp markers and they will snap to these lines here. So to add a warp marker, you can position the song pointer wherever you want. And if you've got snap to grid on and you click near the little lines, it'll snap to them. And then you can hit add warp marker. And you can also add them by clicking on one of the lines and right clicking, add warp marker. And you can also clear them this way. And you can add as many as you like. And these warp markers will let Mixcraft snap to the grid up here. And you can actually move these however you like. And let me play that for you and show you what that sounds like. If I move this over a lot, it's gonna squish this little area. 
So this literally lets you uh, mold the fabric of time inside the song and let you move any areas how you like without affecting adjacent areas. So this can be kind of time consuming, um, but it gives you a great deal of flexibility. Getting back to the rest of our mashup over here, I've already used auto warp on the call me pieces. And again, we can change the tempo to whatever we like. Here's some tricks you can do that'll make editing a little easier. If you have the snap turned on and you highlight regions up here, first of all, the selection region will snap to the little lines in here. And this makes it really easy to select, for example, a two bar segment or a one bar segment. So I'm just going to select a bar here. If I zoom in, you can see it a little better. And now I'm going to press the play button over here. If I press the tab button, Mixcraft will jump in increments of that selection. And you can also resize the selection by holding on the shift key and clicking. It's also really good to know that you can turn warp on and off at any time. Let's say you've set all kinds of warp markers and you're doing all sorts of silly stuff to the audio. And you want to turn that off and just hear it without it. Just hit the warp button and it'll turn off, or you can turn it back on and your warp markers are still there messing with your audio as you please. You can also warp only a certain section of a song. So let's say I just want to use, say, the first two bars of the song. First I'm going to move my start position where I want it, and this will snap to the little lines again. So I'm going to select a section up to there, for example, and then I can say Auto Warp Selection, and this is only going to auto warp this section of the song. Another thing you can do that's similar is you can place the song position marker, like here for example, and right click and say auto warp from here, which will only auto warp from there to the end of the song, but it won't auto warp anything before it. Hey, I just 